You don't have to be a long time subscriber of this channel to know when it comes to new Lego sets, I get very impatient. In the past, I've built Chopper from the Buildable Droids, which we only got a couple of months ago. I've also built sets like Keller and Beck and Grogu Speeder Bike and a few other battle packs and various sets across the last year or two. And today, we're going to be taking a look at the Rebel Scout Speed Up versus Imperial Dropship. As of recording this video, it's a set that hasn't hit the shelves. And that means people like me who aren't in LAN are unable to enjoy these sets as early as others. However, that all changes today because today I am going to be piecing this together without the instructions, without the stickers and without the parts needed to build this set. I haven't tried to find a hidden list of the parts I am doing this using the five images present on Lego's website. More about that in just a second. But this is something that I used to do when I was young. Take the sets that I've been given for birthdays for Christmas and build the sets that I hadn't got or Lego just hadn't made at the time from my favorite scenes, mostly in Star Wars, The Clone Wars. So this is gonna be a really fun video to film. There are a few surprises and tricks that I've got hidden up my sleeve. So if you do end up enjoying this video, I'd appreciate a like, subscribe to see more content like this going forward. And if you did want to apply for LAN, the deadline is coming up in about a week's time. So make sure you don't like me, leave it to last minute and have to wait another six months. I hope you enjoy the video. Taking a look at the images we've got to use, you can see there was five on the Lego website and I'm sure I could get some images from elsewhere or some stills from the review, but I'm gonna make this a challenge and only use these five images now the first one is the exact same as the front of the box art and is also very similar to the first real image on the site so that does get rid of two images and then we have the back of the box and a close-up of the figures well the figures are pretty straightforward in the other two images so we're just going to use these two for the sake of the video and that is everything that i need the easiest model seems to be the Rebel Scout Speeder, which is also true for the last LEGO builds. And I bet you didn't know that these are both LEGO original sets. I mean, the Rebel Scout Speeder literally hasn't appeared anywhere other than the original LEGO set. And the easiest techniques on this speeder is definitely how they get the front together. You can see here, I have replicated this with a handful of pieces, all based around snot bricks which are holding it all together i really don't see another way how lego could have worked this you can also see that there is a wedge plate and what seems to be a round two by two of sorts on the bottom which we'll get to in a minute but this is put together with a few slopes on the side and the front and i really like how they've used the snot bricks here because you've got this corner which is offset from the outside slope by half a plate or also the same width that a bracket would offset the pieces which creates this nice curve going around the front of the speeder so I really like how Lego have done that but not only are we going to be rebuilding the speeder you see I have started if you watch my last review you will know that I've started making my own stickers and decals so I have here hopefully all the stickers we're going to need for this set. We're not gonna be recreating the different screws and plates that Lego have used on the speeder, just the parts that matter, like the Rebel logo right on the front here. Using our trusty brick separator to get it quite low to the front of the speeder. I think we could go a bit over to the left and this just gets the extra detail that we wouldn't get without these custom stickers. And already the speeder seems to be coming together, but we move on to the next section that I've now built, which is this mix of plates. I know Lego did include this dark red section as a sticker rather than a plate, but as it is a one by two, we can get away with using a plate and angling the slope a bit steeper than the one that Lego uses. We've also got these slopes over the side and again, another snot brick here to hold up a control panel that we don't actually see in this set but we do get a look at the stormtrooper one which is printed so i'm assuming they're going with this printed one by two which is fairly common rather than using a sticker like they did in 2019 for the imperial dropship and i have to mention 
If it weren't for one of the many Luke Land Speeders I had, I wouldn't have got this windshield. All right, I've been working on this for quite a while and I think this is the best shape of the body we are getting. I've used the second box image on the back where you can see the turret is actually popped off, which gives us a lot of this top bit to work with. We've got the one by three jumpers here, We've got the engines, really, really cool engines, and I'm happy they've gone with this blue rather than the typical orange we see in the Star Wars universe. I've also told off this outer side because otherwise there is no way of getting those snot techniques flush with the bottom of the base. And I've actually switched up from the two by two round plates at the front to these two by sixes because they connect with the rest of the model. And you can see I've used a lot of repetition in the bases. We get a look at the back here. And as I've already used one by fours elsewhere, and you can see there is a one by four on the top bit here on the interior. I'm assuming that's a one by four, not a two by four. So I'm pretty confident this is almost exactly how Lego have made their model. And then we've continued the two by eights up into the middle here with three of them along the body to add a bit more structure to the base. So we've got a two plate thick base and then I've added some snot bricks along the walls to get the sides attached. Now for these sides I have made two the same and you can see we've got another sticker that I have made myself but I didn't own the slope piece needed for the front. In fact I've ordered it for a set review that might be coming up. Keep your eye out on Sunday because you do get to choose between the two old dropships, the old Rebel Speeder and the Hoth Cannon Sled. So although I have ordered the piece, it hasn't arrived as of recording this video and I've replaced it with a two by two slope, one of these one by four rounded off slopes and just a one by one cheese slope in there, which does the trick I could alternatively also include a two by three gray wedge but I think this is good enough to add to the side of our model so we've got one of these for the left hand side and then the other one goes just on the right and again the model just keeps getting better I think I'll definitely be picking up the official set at some point now moving on to the back of the speeder I have never seen these rounded elements in my life ever before i'm pretty sure they must be new similar to it and just below the image on the back of the box is this piece in black which i know i have some blue ones from one of the green goblins gliders but we'll get to that later so for the back i've gone with a, again another mirror image of this piece here and i've decided as i was building out the front i might as well build out the back because it's a pretty rare piece that I'd rather put towards use on the dropship. And as you can see, what I've done is taken this corner slope, so we've still got the same shape on the back, which I feel is a bit more common than the piece that Lego use in its place. And then we've got this double slope, a cheese slope with one of these one by two slopes. I really like this and the other option. And I think we should get a few more. I think the one that we are missing is any of the inverted slope with the piece on top rather than the bottom. Basically this, but upside down. I'd love to see that. And to get the similar dome shape, I've used a two by two and extended the base. We've used a load of two by threes in dark bluish gray, well, a handful at this point, but I have used a two by four just to extend it underneath where we'd have that window element for the engines, which is a really nice addition and something the older model was definitely lacking. And once again, these are just going on the snot bricks that we placed earlier. And the speeder is actually complete. It looks a bit different to how it does in the first image. And that is because we are yet to build the cannon, but we basically get a look all around from these two images. So that's gonna be light work. As I said, we get a look at absolutely everything, including the vehicle element that goes over the top, we also get a look at the controls. The stud shooters are fairly simple to make with their red studs in the middle and the turret is thin enough to replicate. Once again, Green Goblin did come with some of these translite blue elements at the end of the cannon, but I don't own them in black. They're not exclusive to the set, but right now they're only in Anakin and Sebulba's pod race diorama. And that's it's a bit pricey to be building this set for under £35. For the base of the cannon, I've constructed this 
small podium that it will stand on. Again, it's hollowed. I'm not really sure what the set does with these hollowed out edges. I think they're just paying homage to the older style of Lego sets that had a load of these gaps in them. And the turret doesn't exactly stand up when it's facing backwards, but it should have no problems looking the other way. So this is how it should connect to the speeder and using the jumper tiles we put on earlier, you can see it's a perfect fit. So we have our Rebel speeder, but what about the Imperial dropship? Well, to start off with, we had to choose the cockpit. We get the clearest images of the cockpit. We do, in fact, get an image of the open cockpit, which shows us there's a black slope on the underside. I think it's one of the squared off models, but both of them are gonna do the exact same. We also see two of these brackets on the front and that the slope with the panel in that we just about see in the second image is just one plate higher. So I've raised it using a black two by two brick and I did want to use some of the same elements that we'll get to looking for the back of the ship, but I didn't actually own any more of the two by twos with only two studs. So I've used a two by four in the middle. We get a good look at the back of the cockpit as well and it's all pretty self-explanatory until we get to the back of the model. You can see it's not very secure right now. We do have some panels that will fix that up for us quite nicely when we get to add in these side details, but we don't get a look at what goes on in the middle. So if you do have the set or are looking at picking it up, put it next to the screen and see how it compares to mine because this is what I've gone with to try and make it a bit secure. You saw the top pop in off, but that can be fixed by adding this panel on to the side. And now it's looking a bit more like what we see on screen. The only exception is this clip element out here. But first we've got to do the exact same the other side because this gives us the nice plane that we're going to rest against the rest of the model. This was a lot more fiddly, I will admit, than I thought it would be. But we see the top section and this middle bit in the two images. We also get a look, if you look very, very closely, I'm not sure if it's a brown bracket or a tan bracket because there are a few different colors, but this Imperial dropship does seem to be mostly gray, black, both grays, black, dark blue and brown, which I really like. They've added some browns to the older color schemes. I've had to go with blue a few times just because of part restraints in my end. And so far, I haven't had to order any pieces. So these models are completely free, but on the inside, I have given it a bar to connect to the clips that I added to the cockpit. And it does work very, very nicely. You can see there's a slight gap between the two and we don't get a good angle to see just how that looks on the official Lego model. But I think this is turning out really, really well. There's a little sag on the cockpit itself but I'm hoping to reinforce that with a plate or something underneath to stop it bending in the future. And that brings us to the base I have created. This is just a slab of bricks, of plates, and I've added a feature towards the back that I think is really interesting, but we'll look at that at the back because I've sort of planned ahead and got ahead of myself. So for the most part, we've just got the black bricks holding up the different plates. I feel like they would use more of the 4x4s in grey because I've used one at the bottom, one there. And I did want to use one to cover the whole of the top bit and then use one of the 1x4s. But I feel like this is going to hold a bit better for my model. Again, we've used some of the slopes on the bottom. We did use some 2x3s earlier. I have a feeling that's what Lego would use. We are not restricted by the same constraints that they are in terms of pieces. So we've got some two by fours just to close up that gap in the middle and this should i haven't tested this out yet but this should fit just nicely on here and prop up the cockpit and it seems there's a little little bit of wobble but for the most part it has been fixed which is really nice and we can start working on these side panels the side panels are quite nice because they are holding together the model much like they are at the front of the ship. So we'll start off with the left hand side and all I've done to create these side panels is use a 3x3 three three black plate which again I feel like is going to feature elsewhere throughout this model because it's the same plate I use to attach the stud shooters on the side. So you can see there are some techniques that LEGO use in terms of part restrictions that can help you build these models before the official sets release and they clip 
to the side stopping the bottom from being separated. The exact same thing on the other side and you might have noticed that I'm using the piece I saved from the Rebel Speeder. I only own two of these, I have no idea what set they're from. Probably some sort of TIE Fighter by the looks, but as I have my 2012 TIE, they must have been from a different set. And now we've got the engines at the top with the expanded bits and also the back to work on. So I think we're gonna go with the engines first so that the dropship can at least fly to where it needs. And for the main part of the engines, I have created, again, very similar to the last two versions, these engines here that we see the top half of, but I've connected them to these one by one with the Technic pinhole in the middle so that it can rotate like the others. I have a feeling it's a function we're not gonna need, but I do not own any of the one by one with the axle holes, so I don't really have a choice in how I create this. But this should go just on the back here, and again, it's a bit annoying that we've got these two studs exposed, so I might cover them up in a minute like we did with the Rebel ship. I'll be honest, it doesn't annoy me that much because of all the other details going on throughout the rest of this model. There wasn't even a point stopping the camera up because these are probably the easiest pieces we've created. You get a look at an angle, there is a plate in between the brick and the wedge plate that I've used, again in a different blue colour. These grey bricks should be black, but as long as you're keeping to the same colour palette of the set, it shouldn't matter too much and these can connect straight in to the axles on the side. I mentioned about using the grey plate. The reason I went back and took a look is because the bricks stick out just a little bit without that plate in the middle, whereas now they go flush with the axle and the other Technic plate in the middle and we can start work on the bottom mechanism to the dropship. Well, I guess I completely missed that. In image two, we get a really good look at it. And besides a few modifications I have made just because of, again, part restrictions, I've pretty much now the back of it. And I'm really sure this is the connection they are using on the inside. I've used a Technic connector there because if we did use one of those bar elements that split up, one of these bar elements, I don't know why I had to describe it. It's a very firm connection and it does take some effort to pull apart and you're not going to want that in a play feature that's going to be used time and time again. Whereas using this Technic connection as well as some of these door rails to provide that support, you're clipping it into the piece and it comes out fairly easy. It provides enough support that it's not going to fall out during play but it's a really smart connection and I prefer it a bit more to the old one that used to just clip in when the engines were tilted down. Whilst we're speaking about this back section of the dropship, there are two handlebars, these little bar elements. You can't fit a minifigure hand in, so they're not to carry extra storm troopers, but they look like they should connect to something and I really don't know what. There's nothing else in this set that they can connect to. You can't fit like a gun between the gap or anything like that. So I'm really intrigued to see why these were used here. I haven't seen them used anywhere else throughout the set, unless perhaps these are used to connect the cockpit of the dropship and they just had some black one by twos, but they definitely could have reused this dark blue piece instead. So I'm really intrigued to see why these pieces are there and what the thought was from the Lego designers. Perhaps this is similar to the speed up where you can clip a gun onto it using another element and then have the stormtroopers firing out of a back turret. I'll be honest, I am very impressed with how the stickers turned out for these models. And though I did pick the wrong shade of blue for the back stickers, I think the logos just add that extra identifier to the set and really draw you into the Star Wars universe. But we are not done yet. Of course, we've got to go with our minifigures. And we'll start off with the dropship. It's fairly simple. Three Stormtroopers, they are our brand new style. You can see we've got the white hips and also that black groin printing at the top of both of the legs. Fairly straightforward, nice simple minifigures. And I'll be honest, I don't see how Lego can improve the Stormtrooper after this model. Yes, I am a fan of the helmet because it does cover up the back and allows us to have custom minifigure heads inside. But for the Rebel Alliance, we don't just have our regular Rebel fleet 
Trooper, which does have... I think this face is both nostalgic because it's come on all the old minifigures and it also just does work for the Rebel Fleet Trooper. But this time we don't have three of the exact same minifigures as we do have one of our Rebel Fleet Troopers sporting that new Captain Antilles face print. It's not exclusive to the set, but it has only come in that £50 Captain Antilles minifigure from the Tantive boarding play rama so it's nice to be getting that minifigure face for a cheaper price i guess though the rest of antilles is still exclusive we also get a female rebel trooper which is something lego star wars has been missing because i think this is one of the first times we get a fleet trooper this is not the official version i will have that on the right but it's the closest i've got well at least that was until I remembered that we're printing our own stickers for the set. So I've gone and printed the face of the Rebel Trooper onto a common Rebel Trooper just for the purpose of this video. By the way, I am aware that this face has come on a minifigure before, but that's the cheapest £90 Yavin ceremony. So the face by no means is cheap if you want to build a cheaper custom rebel crew member check out the short that went out alongside this video and here we have both the rebel scout speeder and the brand new imperial dropship which by the way is the third time lego have made this set perhaps we'll see another one in another five years but as we've got these built and they're looking pretty accurate to their original sets I might as well give my quick review. First up, the Rebel Speeder. By the way, I did include these translucent round bits on the side because they were included in the last Rebel Speeder and they allow it to glide on all surfaces. We've got it gliding on my mat here. I used to play with these ships that had the similar buttons on the bottom on my Nan's carpet. So I know they hold up to that. And even if you've got a solid wood floor or perhaps some other hard surfaces like tiles or lino they're going to hold up to all surfaces including your desk and i really think lego doesn't need to improve it we do have some play features here like some stud shooters that i'm not going to fire because i still haven't found the last ones but the turret does lift off very very easily in fact so does that guy's helmet will replace that to add a hidden storage compartment if perhaps you do want to store their weapon whilst they're firing the turret. It's a big upgrade from that simple lever we got all the way back with the original set. And I really like the fact that the turret can be fired up, down, and this trans blue element definitely looks a little bit better for the use of lasers. But I also like the use of certain Technic elements to give little gaps in the turret. And it looks like they're exposed separate parts. It's worth noting also that on the side of the cannon back here, we have some ladders so that the minifigure can get up into the seat, which is not something that Lego look at often. And again, the speeder is nice, solid, very bulky compared to the last one. And they've definitely built the speeder a lot better than just adding slopes to the side. I'm really happy with the techniques I've used to replicate Lego's model. And onto the Imperial dropship, which doesn't have any of them buttons on the bottom because it just lands, the stormtroopers can detach, and it flies away to protect the skies of the battle. This little trooper attachment is very simple. Again, we've got these mystery clips on the bottom, which if this was a FNAF game, there would be a ton of videos about but I haven't seen anyone else mention the two troopers are more than capable of holding their blasters. But we do have clips on the side. I've used this one here to hold the blaster of the pilot, although you can definitely flip them around and make use of them like extra cannons for the gunship. The mechanism to slide this in and out is so easy. The engines also do angle, but they angle a lot more when the troopers aren't in for takeoff and perhaps for landing. And that does turn the sides here but again i'm not sure if lego have used a technic brick in there to stop the movement but i doubt it because it is still quite a fun feature as far as the other details we've got the stud shooters at the front and the cockpit is so much more secure than when i first built it we've got our pilot in there which could have been another shadow trooper but you know full well if LEGO gave us a Shadow Trooper in this set, not only would this make the video 10 times harder because they're very expensive minifigures to get a hold of, and I don't own any, but also 
I'm going to be complaining that we didn't get another Stormtrooper. This set is the perfect battle pack. And of course, we could have seen another Rebel and another Stormtrooper. But would you really want to see the price increase any higher than it already is? I think it's definitely worth the money for both of these sets. But I'd love to hear your opinions down in the comments. Will you be picking up this set? Will you be picking it up day one? Or waiting for an eventual Lego sale towards the end of the year or perhaps for the Star Wars holiday next year. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Check out the others on screen now and may the bricks be with you always. As everyone says, once you've built one Lego set, you've built them all. Well, nobody says it, but it is kind of true.